Many of our cities are in decline, and when we see our neighborhoods getting worse, we want to jump in and help, but we're not sure where to start. We want to make sure the work that we do actually makes a difference. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a simple system that you can start using today to have a massive, positive, long-term impact in your city. Cities can fall into decline for any number of reasons. Maybe you lost a large employer, or maybe you have an aging, dwindling population. Uh, maybe you have slum lords that took over the town and there's lax codes enforcement and houses just aren't being taken care of. Or maybe you're similar to our town in Catanning, Pennsylvania, and we could just check the box that says all of the above. The great news is that no matter what happened in your city, you don't have to stay there. You can make a comeback. Five years ago, our church decided that we wanted to be a part of that comeback in Catanning. And so we started to do some different work in a program that we call Summer of Serve. We started with very basic things. We went and started taking care of um, abandoned properties. So we would mow grass and pull weeds and take care of flower beds and do all of those kind of simple things just to spruce up abandoned properties. Then as time went on, we got a little bit more advanced. We started doing painting projects and tore down garages and did whatever people would ask us to do. But it kind of felt like we were just treading water. We wanted to do something more. What we realized is that if we were gonna have a bigger long-term impact, we needed to have a more targeted, data-driven approach. We needed a system that was gonna be simple, a system that would be sustainable, a system that could be reproducible, that no matter who did it, they could accomplish the same task. And we wanted a system that was gonna be universal, that it could be used not only here in Catanning, but in any city or neighborhood across the country. After a lot of trial and error and much prayer, this is what we came up with. In the spring of 2019, my friend Kevin and I decided that we were going to go and survey the entire town. We went through every property in the borough and ranked it based on two metrics. The first metric was how severe is the damage on the property? We gave it a score from one to five, one being the least severe amount of damage, five being the most severe. And then we also ranked each property based off of how simple was it to fix? One being the least simple to fix or the hardest to fix and five being an easy job that could be done in a day. We combine those two scores to get a total score for every single house. I'll show you in a minute what we do with that data, but uh, first let me just give you a couple examples so you can see what I'm talking about. A house like this one behind me is possibly the easiest house that you could ever rank. Uh, on the severity of damage, it is an absolute five. There are zero redeemable qualities about this place. It has a bad roof, it has bad siding, it has boarded up windows, it's been abandoned for 10 plus years. Uh, it is a five in every single respect. And as far as how easy it is to fix, well, it's a one. It's a very, very difficult house to fix. In fact, uh, someone would probably be crazy to even take that job on. It probably just needs to be torn down. So that is a five and a one. At the total other end of the spectrum, some things that we mark down are very, very minor in comparison. This house, for example, is a really beautiful house. Obviously, they have done a lot of remodeling and have done a fantastic job in doing it. Uh, but when you look at this door, they took out one of the doors in this duplex and it's just not quite finished yet. That would make our ranking in the total opposite way. So that's a one on severity. It's not severe at all. It doesn't detract from the neighborhood really in any meaningful way. And it's a five on simplicity. It's very, very easy to fix. In fact, that homeowner will probably fix it before we ever even get to ask them whether they want help or not. But it still makes the list because remember our goal here, we want to measure the long-term impact of the community. And so we want to include as much data as we possibly can. Now those are two extremes. We obviously have the, those types of properties all across the town and including everything in between. Right in between those two properties would be a house like this one. It's also abandoned, but it does have some redeeming qualities. It has some new siding on the front. It has a good roof, but there's obviously still some disrepair here. The fixes are also a little bit more complex. It needs some awning work. Uh, there's a lot of paint that needs to be done on the trim work. Could use some siding, has some vines growing up. So this one we would rank as a four for the severity of damage and a three for the simplicity of fixing it. So after we completed our survey of every house in the borough, let me show you what we do with the data. So after we surveyed the entire community, we end up with a database that looks like this. As you can see here, it uh, looks pretty simple. Um, we have our full property address, but I'm gonna mask the house numbers just to uh, give people some privacy here. Uh, the work needed, just kind of like a general description of what it needed at the time. 
Uh, and then you see our scores, the simplicity of the project, the severity of the damage, and our total score. Now the reason that we were looking for that total score was specifically for Summer Reserve and for Habitat for Humanity. As we do different projects, it's nice to know that if we can do a project that is very simple but is also going to have a high impact, it just boosts our greater impact in the entire borough. So uh, the more projects that we could do, the more that we can accomplish in a year, obviously, that are going to make a bigger impact, the, the greater the long-term impact, and that's what we were after. This is actually our new list for 2020. Uh, this is for 2019. And so, and so as we did our second survey here at the end of this year, um, every property here that's green is a property that is totally completed. Every property highlighted in yellow is a property that was improved. And there were a couple that were red on our list that actually end up um, being noticeably worse than they were at the beginning of the year. This ends up being incredibly powerful information for us because then we can share this information with local organizations. We can share it with naysayers in town who say, well, it's not really getting any better. And we can show them using data uh, how much better it's actually getting. These are our results from the first year of using this program. You can see when we add up all the severity scores for all of the houses, it totaled 917 points. When we ended the year, we were at 794 points. Um, so it's actually a pretty drastic improvement over the course of a single year. That equaled, you can see over here, these are our numbers. We have 30 properties that went down to a score of zero. We had 52 total properties that were noticeably better, two that were noticeably worse for a net improvement of 13.41%. That is an absolutely massive result for our first year. Now the other really nice thing is with modern technology, if you have it all in a spreadsheet like that, we can make some really cool graphics using Google Maps. Check this out. This is the entire borough of Catanning and every single property that we surveyed. You can see these are our severity of damage rankings on the left and they're color coded on the map. What's really awesome is we can zoom in and we can take a look at, um, this is one of the main neighborhoods that we focused on in Summer Serve and Habitat really focused a lot of efforts here during Rock the Block. And so we have the start of the year and then if we, if we turn on here, this is our data from the end of the year. Um, you can see that if we toggle back and forth, all of the houses in purple here are actually completed properties, completed projects. And then you see other homes like these uh, that are turning from yellow to uh, blue and green. That means they're going from a score of a three to a two or a one. And so it's a really nice thing that we can show uh, all of this data and show exactly what's going on throughout the borough in a single year's work. And I'm sure you can see how incredibly powerful a map like that would be. It becomes very easy then to prioritize. You know, where are we gonna put our efforts next year? Uh, what neighborhood do we wanna focus on? What street do we wanna go and knock doors and see who we can help? It shows the big picture and really allows us to go to other organizations, recruit more volunteers, recruit more community partners, and show them the progress in a really tangible way. The other nice thing the spreadsheet does is since we have all of the general work that needs done, uh, we know that if we want to just spend a day pressure washing, we can just search our list for all of the pressure washer houses. Or if we want to spend the summer painting, or we want to spend the summer um, rebuilding porches if we have some talented construction volunteers that want to come and do something. We can find them a project really, really quickly and efficiently without having to drive around the neighborhood and search for projects all over again. We've also found this really helpful with our local Habitat for Humanity, uh, with our local borough government. Habitat specifically has used this data in writing grants, and they recently hit a grant for $2.2 million over the next five years. And uh, this data is going to show the progress that's being made in town for what that money is being used for. And as you know, with grant writing and receiving grants, if you can show a really positive impact, the likelihood of you getting more money in the future becomes even greater. And so we're expecting this not to be a kind of an end game, but this is like the beginning of what we're trying to do. It allows us to uh, create partnerships within the community that give us a snowball effect. So that one small project that you start with, when you begin to show people data and you begin to show them real improvement, uh, then everyone else wants to get on board too. And that's when these things start to get really exciting. 
And this also helps us to celebrate together. Uh, a lot of times my summers, I just feel like I'm running around with like a chicken with my head cut off because I'm going from project to project and going from thing to thing. And I don't stop to take time and breathe and to actually see what's been accomplished. But with something like this, you're actually documenting your progress year over year. And you can tell, you can tell in just a moment how much progress has really been made in the community. And so for me, it's a really nice opportunity to go back and reflect. These things can get discouraging and you feel like you're not making a difference, but if you have some real solid data to fall back onto, and we can go back and look at the data and say, yes, this is making a difference. There is a real impact. The hard work is worth it. So that's the system, you guys. It's very simple, but it has been incredibly effective for us in our first year of using it. I'd love to show you guys how to use it. If you're in a different small town and you want to get something like this started where you are at, please contact me either through Facebook or Twitter or leave a comment down below with your email address. I'd be happy to send you a sample spreadsheet. I'd be happy to talk with you on the phone or over Skype uh, to teach you how to make these interactive maps through Google Maps and how to uh, start a project like this in your town. There's so many areas around the United States states and around the world that are in great need like our town and it's one of my great passions that people would just come together that we would truly just love our neighbors as ourselves that when our friends and our family are in need that we would step up and help them that our communities would truly come together again and be there for one another and I know there are hundreds of thousands if not millions of people that are willing to get involved and help but a lot of times we just don't know where to start. And so I hope this will be a great tool for your toolbox, whether you're with a church or whether with a nonprofit organization, that you could take a system like this and use it to transform your city. I'd also love it if you'd leave a comment, give me your feedback on what you think of this system. We tried to keep it simple, but if you have some kind of improvement uh, that would supercharge it for us or that would take us to the next level, I would love to hear it. I'm always interested in hearing other people's ideas and improving systems. And so that's why I'm sharing this with you and I'm hoping that you'll share it back with me and when we combine our ideas, we'll have an even greater impact. I'd also like to give all of you just a word of encouragement. You have to get started. Don't just take in this information and never do anything with it. If you want to make an impact in your community, go and do it. Start small. Do something simple. Do something easy. Get some, get some wins under your belt. And you can always grow from there. But you'll never know how much of an impact that you can have in your community unless you start. So go get started. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Follow what we're doing. And um, let's connect. Let's share ideas. Let's, let's change the world together, you guys. God bless you all. See you in the next one. Forgot to mention in the video, if you want to check out any of the projects that we've done, I'll put a Summer of Serve playlist on my channel. You can go check out all the projects that we've done over the last five years, or at least the ones that I've recorded. And hopefully you can get some ideas that will spark some activity in your community. All right, for real this time. Bye.